How's it going guys? It is out here and in this video we are going to be looking at the Oppo Reno5 which is Oppo's newest release for Nigeria. I've been using it for over a month now and in this video we are going to go over all the specs and features and my experience using this over time. Without further ado, let's get to the video. When you open the box of the Oppo Reno5, the first thing you get is a smaller box as usual with some other smaller elements, your SIM ejector tool, the safety guide, the quick guide, and of course, a silicone case for protection. Right after them, you get the smartphone with the highlights up front, AI mixed portrait, dual view video, AI highlight video, 50 watt flash charge, and 90 hertz refresh rates. As far as the accessories in the box, you've got the huge 50 watt charger, which we'll come to in a few minutes. It's branded as Super Vook, and you've got a thick USB-C cable to back it up, and of course the headphones. Now, back to the device. We've already seen the highlights written on the wraps of the device. And, you know, when we take the wrap off and the sticker off of the back, we're greeted with a very shimmering Oppo Reno5 device. It looks super dope. The color does reflect well under good light. And the case, you know, when the case is added, doesn't make this look so bad. Or at least it lets it retain the bodily spark that it has. I was able to set up the Reno5 in under a minute and getting inside were ushered right into Android 11, skinned with their newest or their updated ColorOS 11.1. Now that we have the unboxing and setup out of the way, let's get to the specifics of the phone, the display, the battery, the build quality, performance camera and everything in between. Oppo went with AMOLED again, like we had on previous Reno devices, but this time around, we get a slightly higher 6.43 inch display, 91.7% screen to body ratio, we've got a 90 hertz type display on here, 430 nits of brightness at the minimum and 600 nits of brightness at the maximum. And as a quick side note guys, the Reno5 is one of two versions. There's a Reno5 with 5G version that has 600 nits at the minimum for brightness. And you know that's more of an international version but this device this one here is the 4g version however they are all 1080p by 2400 pixel display and you know it has 20 by 9 aspect ratio display when it comes to build quality the 5g version has glass on the back and this one has polycarbonate on the back which is shatterproof so you know that's sort of a benefit let's face it nigeria doesn't have 5g and these features are only extra features that aren't deal breakers at all, so you're not really missing out on anything. The 90 hertz display on this guy though is something that I think people would enjoy and I really fancied about this device. I loved how the display showed videos I streamed and you know, thankfully for the new updates on YouTube, you can actually stream 4K video on this phone. The color is good thanks to that AMOLED display, you know, and using it for day-to-day -day tasks that are heavily text-based and graphically intense, and it also looked pleasing both in the bright sunlight and at night time. I like that they added a quite subtle feature that shows a bit of, you know, edge lighting when it comes to notifications or when notifications come onto your device. You can choose between the neon purple, ocean blue, and amber orange colors to display when you get a notification. All right, moving on to the build quality oh, and the body of the Reno5. First off, we've only got a few color options. Actually, just two color options this time around. We've got the Fantasy Silver and the Starry Black. I'm currently using the Starry Black, but I had a few seconds with the Fantasy Silver, and I must say, it's a much, much, much better color than this black. I wish I got that, but hey, I got the black and, you know, not so bad. The starry version of the Reno5 has different rainbow colored reflections and it looks really, really nice. You've got your power button on the right side with that Oppo green accent. You've got the volume rockers on the left side with the dual SIM and micro SD card slot. You've got one microphone on the top and another microphone at the base of the device alongside the headphone jack, the USB-C port and the speaker. Atop the front of the screen, we've got the earpiece and the single hole punch cutout for that 44 megapixel front facing camera. On the back is where we get the quad camera array in a rounded rectangular section and the Oppo branding at the lower end. This phone does feel very light in the hand and slim as well. The case being fitted on it does make it you know, fit well, it doesn't add too much to the weight of this phone. Now in terms of the performance of this Oppo Reno5, we've got a Snapdragon 720G processor on here. 
it's of course an 8 nanometer processor capable of handling a lot of tasks smoothly. Again, coupled with 8 gigs of RAM on here, multitasking was a breeze for me. It was quite okay during my use. I also have fitted again 128 gigs of storage, which is plenty for most people. It's big enough, and you know, if it's not big enough for you, you can add another SD card with that free slot available. All that being said, the Renault 5 comes with Android 11 with their updated color OS 11.1, and that's the same as the 5G version. So, again, you are not really missing out much. I did a lot of gaming with the Renault 5. You know, my favorite mobile game, Call of Duty, ran freely. Any phone that would let me have over 40 game kills smoothly without dying is very, very, very welcome. And I noticed that if you maxed out the frame rate on the Oppo Renault 5, you can't max out the graphics. And if you max out the graphics, you can't max out the frame rate. So that 90 hertz frame rate that you get on here, coupled with the AMOLED Lush display, gets you a very smooth experience. It also didn't affect the battery life on here. With that gigantic 4310 mAh big battery of the Renault 5, I remember playing Call of Duty once and it was like 12%. After 40 minutes of playing, I still had like 6% left. I just wanted to kill the battery. Of course, Oppo ships this phone with a 50 watt SuperVOOC fast charger and it does perform really well. I did my usual tests, but this time around, I did it in 15 minute increments. The first 15 minutes uh, I charged this phone got from 0% to 37%, then to 63% in 30 minutes, and at the 45 mark we were already approaching 86%. In an hour we got 97%, and only 12 minutes after that did we get 200%. That's actually impressive that we get from 0 to 40% in just 15 minutes of charging. And, and Oppo implemented some tech that lets you charge this phone and play games safely so you don't lose any battery life. This would work well if you use their charger that comes with the phone and their cable that comes with it as well. You know, those have the tech implemented inside it. As far as the other things before we move on to the cameras on here, we do have air gesture control, which works for scrolling when you don't want to touch your phone. Let's say your hand is wet and you don't want to have grease all over your screen. You just swipe up and down the camera section and you use it to scroll. You can also use it to dismiss calls as well. In terms of unlocking the device, you've got the usual face unlock, which is fast and the fingerprint reader and on-screen fingerprint reader. These are all aside from the normal pin pattern and password. The face unlock, as I mentioned, is fast and it was also fast to set up. The fingerprint reader just needs you to place your hand uh, on the screen for a little more than a fraction of a second so it flashes the light, captures it. But so far, I've not had a problem with either one of them, but I prefer, I really prefer the fingerprint reader to the face unlock. Now to the cameras. If you've gotten this far in the video, please hit that like button. And if you're loving this video so far, you can consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the bell icon beside it so you'll be the first to know when we post a new video. All right, when it comes to the camera of the Oppo Reno 5, first off, we have a 44 megapixel selfie camera, which serves not only as the camera, but also as a sensor for hand motion and face unlock as we've demonstrated just now. And you know, on the back, we've got the elaborate quad camera setup 64 megapixel main camera, 8 megapixel ultra wide, 2 megapixel macro, and 2 megapixel mono camera on the upper right side. One major difference between the 2 megapixel macro and the main lens is smoothness. Of course, it's evident that a 64 megapixel capable sensor will outperform a 2 megapixel capable sensor. However, the macro lens really lets you get super, super close to your subjects. And, you know, with enough light, you can capture something worthy. Out in the field, you can be sure that you will get sharp selfies out of the front facing camera on this phone, straight out of the camera. The selfies I got from the Rhino 5 were some of the sharpest selfies. Uh, this is a selfie taken in a well lit environment and it's very, very sharp. This is also the same with the portrait mode or the portrait shots I took on here. When it separates the foreground for the background, it does really good. There's no front facing flash on the Oppo Reno 5, so it uses a few light from the screen. And the front facing camera is also capable of recording video in 1080p at 30 frames per second. And if you want to, you can also get 120 FPS or slow motion. How's it going guys? So this is the front facing camera video quality of the Oppo Reno 5. Let me know what you think about this video quality you currently see as well as the sound quality in the comment section below. Now when it comes to the night mode or the nighttime selfies, I took shots 
without the light and it turned out like this. I also took shots with the flash or the fuel light if you will that came out really bright on the face which I thought looked much much better. Then the night mode changes everything where it has everywhere looking like it's daytime. It's the brightest one of all the bunch but it takes about 6 seconds to process the picture you take with night mode. One scenario where you would use your camera is taking pictures or taking images of objects and when I took shots with the wide angle camera on here, the 8 megapixel wide angle camera had more focus on the background than what I held or you know it had zero depth of field. It looked clear but I wish it was sharper uh, you know on the foreground and had better bokeh for the background but that's the specialty for the main lens. The main lens looked much much better with a 64 megapixel capable sensor of course better than 8. The bokeh and everything about the image showed quality with proper exposure, proper sharpness, proper texture. Everything just looked better on the main lens. Of course, there's no telephoto lens, so the digital zoom brings the closure up, which can also be a crop. And this shows quite a bit of noise, you know, but a very well processed zoomed image, and it's also usable. Another scenario is for landscape shots. The 8 megapixel wide angle performed as expected. A very usable image, but it won't be as sharp as the main 64 megapixel main sensor. These shots look a little less saturated and has lesser exposure than the main lens. This main lens shows very interesting colors and angles with less distortions when compared to the ultra wide lens. Plus, it's really sharp. Again, there is no telephoto lens on here, so you do get digital zoom but properly upscaled. The highest you can go on here is 10x but the text is really distorted. However, for a phone, it's fair and it's also fairly readable. This is further distilled to the video quality. One thing to note is that the Renault 5 can shoot 4K videos only at 30 frames per second, while 1080p can be shot at 30, 60 and 120 fps with the same 5G version as well. The 4K video has better color and better sharpness than 1080p which is also a really usable video. The wide angle isn't as sharp as the rest and also shows some distortion, but it's usable and when it comes to the zoom levels on this device with the back cameras, you can also still zoom up digitally 10x in video. When it comes to the night mode scenario, straight into it, the night mode shots on here were much better than the normal mode. When you see them side by side, the details are just better on night mode. When it comes to brightness, highlights and contrast, everything looks pleasant with night mode. It's almost as if there was a secret or a hidden bulb that was turned on for just the night mode shots. And you know, night mode as I mentioned takes about 6 seconds to process the image. So you have to have your hands as still as possible when you're taking photos in night mode. Ultra wide in night mode however was really soft and not as clear, you know, again because of the, the 8 megapixel sensor that you have. When it comes to zoom, you can zoom 5x and 10x, there's a lot of noise because of the struggle that the sensor is undergoing to take shots in the dark. However, large text still doesn't go unnoticed. Video recording at night was really really good in my opinion. Apart from the stable shots, the Renault 5 picks up detailed sound with these two microphones, one at the top and one at the bottom. And although I hear a mono or single channel when I export it, it is well represented here with the loud switches from cars. That I recorded. Other video recording modes that are cool are the dual view video mode where you can record simultaneously with the front and back cameras. They will record at the same time, this can be useful for explainer videos. You also get AI mixed portrait mode where you can blend a landscape video and a portrait video of yourself or someone together and it brings a double exposure video that looks really interesting. Alright, that's it for my review of the Oppo Reno 5. Thank you for making it so far to the end. If you did, comment with the eye emoji. Let's know those of us that stuck around to the end here and you know, let me know guys, is there anything you think I missed about the Renault 5 that I didn't mention and what are your thoughts about the Renault 5? Would you consider getting one or would you skip it? Or do you think it's worth the price tag of a hundred and sixty nine thousand naira or three hundred and fifty three dollars? Let me know in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching guys and I'll see you in the very next video.